Good morning, everyone, and welcome. Today is day one or day two, depending on how you look at it, for the Daily Creative Challenge. Let's call it day one. Yesterday was the welcome and intro. And for those of you who are new or first timers, my name is Terry White. I'm the Worldwide Design and Photography Evangelist for Adobe. It's going to be my pleasure doing the Photography Daily Creative Challenge for you, uh, kicking things off today with your first challenge. Um, so what's this all about for those of you who are new uh if you if this is your first time joining us or you'd like to get in on it you'd like to um download the files and, and work with us i'm gonna walk you through that process uh, i see a few folks in the chat as well deb p sam peterson rachel welcome carlos Ladonna, and sam and victoria glad you guys are all here and guys and gals that is and um let's go ahead and jump in so what this is all about it's, a, it's nine days of challenges starting today and each day you're going to get the option to download the files for the challenge and watch a live stream at 9 a.m pacific time like you're doing now and after you watch the live stream or not you have the ability to go in and do what you what the challenge is to the to the sample photo. Now, if you don't want to use the sample photo, that's great. You can use your own photo. Um, but we provide the samples for those of you who don't have the ability to, like you don't have your own photos that would be good for the challenge. All right, so um, let me show you how you would get started if you're new. You're gonna use your browser and you're gonna head over to behance.net slash live slash Adobe Live. So that's the URL to get started. And I see Inception now, I see myself presenting. But more importantly, um, when you're on this page, you're going to do the sign up to get started. So that's what I'm going to click on now. And that will let you sign up and walk you through how it works. So each day you'll receive the challenge around 7 a.m. Pacific time. Uh, and then you can join the community chat, which uh, there's a link for that as well. You can watch the daily live stream, which you're already doing number three. And uh, then finally share your work. So that's how it works. And then, like I said, each day uh, the challenge is there and you can get started. So today, November 12th challenge is there for you to get started. And of course, watch today's video, tomorrow's challenge, the next day, so forth and so on. Now, um, once you do the challenge, how do you actually get your work viewed and how do you get your work looked at? Well, that all happens on Discord. So it happens via Behance and Discord, but mostly Discord. Um, you can post your images to your Behance profile. And as long as you use the hashtag uh, PS Daily Challenge, uh, then we will be able to find them and I'll be able to look at them. So I'll start doing that tomorrow after today's challenge. Uh, but you also have the ability, if you use Discord, which there's a link for it there, you can download the app, create an account, and then go in and um, upload your images to the challenge section. So let me show you guys what that looks like. Uh, so here I am in the Discord app. There is a PS button for Photoshop. So that lets me into the Photoshop part of this because we also do daily challenges for other applications and uh, graphic design and XD and painting, so forth and so on. But for Photoshop, you'll see a section called Current Challenge. And by the way, if you missed the challenge, if you didn't know where the website was, you can always click on Creative Challenge, and Sam does a great job of posting the challenges every morning, and then you can uh, you can click on it and get to it that way as well. But once you've upload, once you want to upload your image, once you've done the challenge, you would come over to the score and you can upload your challenge in the current challenge area for feedback. Now the feedback is usually, hey, that looks great. <laughs> or it might be some suggestions from other people in the community, or you can go in and ask questions. You can say, hey, I didn't quite get what I should do on this. What should I do better? And then you can, um, you can get feedback that way as well. All right, so with that out of the way, let's go ahead and jump to today's challenge. I'm gonna hide the score for now. I'm gonna hide my web browser for now. And today's challenge is, actually, let me just hide everything for now. Today's challenge, you should have downloaded uh, today's challenge, which is images. Now, again, you can use your own images. This isn't necessarily something you have to do with mine. But I created a second copy of them. You don't have to do this. Uh, so that I had one for classic and I have one for non-classic, the regular Lightroom. 
because the first part of the challenge is importing your photos. And since I don't know which Lightroom you're going to use, I'm going to show you how to do it in both. And then we're going to edit an image and then export an image. And that is today's challenge. Uh, so with that said, uh, you should have uh, these images that I just took randomly at the Atlanta airport. So just hanging out in the uh, cell phone lot and just taking some shots. Ooh, got some cool shots. I got the moon in there. Uh, so we're going to take a look at how to do all of that, how to work with those. And then I just created another copy of those images and renamed them so they would be different. Um, they're the same exact images just to show you how the import process would work in uh, Classic versus Lightroom Classic. Oh, I'm sorry, Lightroom versus Lightroom Classic. So showing you how to do the import. Let's start with Lightroom Classic. Lightroom Classic is the uh, older version of Lightroom, the one that's more full feature, the one that's um, desktop based, I guess is the best way to put it, because you manage all your photos yourself. You manage meaning where they're stored and you manage the backup part. Lightroom, man, Lightroom Classic manages your all your edits and organization and all that. But as far as where the physical files are located, that's on you. Whereas the other version of Lightroom is cloud-based, meaning once you import those images, they sync up to the cloud and therefore we're backing them up and you can use them on all your devices and so forth and so on. So it really depends on who you are and which version you want to use. Now, speaking of that, the first thing I would do before I would even worry about importing in the Lightroom is to put the photos where I want them to be. Because I've got them sitting here on a desktop, but that's not where I'm gonna keep them. They're not gonna live on the desktop forever. So I should probably put them in a location where I plan to keep them from here on out. Now that could be any one of your hard drives. It could be, uh, and there is a way to move them even after the fact. So if you decide, you know, hey, I don't need them on this hard drive anymore. I'm running out of space. I can move them to a different hard drive. Uh, but anyway, I'm gonna go into my hard drive. I'm gonna go into my pictures folder. And just for the sake of example, I'm going to move my DCC photography uh, Lightroom Classic folder into this folder. All right, so now that's where my photos, that's where those nine or so photos or 10 photos physically live. That's where they are. So all Lightroom is going to do, all Classic is going to do is, 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 is link to that location. So when you import images into Lightroom Classic, it doesn't suck them in and then remove them off your hard drive or anything like that, they are still on your hard drive wherever they were, wherever you put them. So it's best to put them where you want them first, then go ahead and import them in the letter. Now, if you're importing from a memory card, then you'll get the opportunity to copy the images where you want them to be um, during that import. So you get to say, hey, I don't, obviously I'm not gonna keep them on the memory card because I'm gonna erase this card eventually and use it again. So copy them off the memory card to a folder on a hard drive of my computer and then import them from there. So that's what Lightroom does. All right, so since I've already done the process of putting them where I want them to be, the next thing is to do the import. So I'm gonna go back to Classic. And you can do this import a couple of different ways. If you know where the images are, you could literally just drag the folder right on top of the Lightroom Classic icon and it will do the import that way. So that's one way to do it. Um, another way to do it is to actually click the import button on the lower left hand corner or do file import photos and video. So three ways right off the bat to do it. Doesn't matter which one, they all do the same thing. So if I click import, then it's going to, uh, it's going to ask me, well, where do you want to get photos from? So I'm going to go, I see my pictures folder. And I see, there it is, the DCC photography folder. If not, you would just navigate to where that folder is. That's why drag and drop is probably easier and faster. But I'm gonna navigate to where those images are. And notice that the default choice is add, not copy, not copy as DNG, not move, add, because it says, oh, they're already on a hard drive. You probably just want to add them in the Lightroom. There's no reason to manage them or move them or do anything to them because they're already on a hard drive. So Lightroom's smart enough to know the difference between a hard drive and removable media like a memory card or a camera. If it, was, if it detected a memory card or a camera, then it's going to ask you, do you want to copy them? So it kind of knows the difference. Uh, is this video Photoshop related? It will be, <laughs> so not yet. So, um, by the way, for those of you who are asking questions like that, because we typically do 
a Photoshop challenge. This is one of the first challenges where we're doing a photography challenge that's both Lightroom and Photoshop. So it's both. Now, if you're looking for just a straight up Photoshop uh, tutorial, this today won't be it, but we're gonna be doing those going on. But we will talk about Photoshop going forward. All right, um, so with that said, all the images are checked. You have the option, of course, to uncheck the ones if you said, oh, those two are duplicates. I really don't need them both. I could uncheck the one I don't need. Um, you can also look at them in, in a bigger view. You can go to loop view down here in the lower left-hand corner behind me, behind me, right there, loop view versus grid view, those buttons there. And when you're in loop view, you can then um, toggle between them um, and and see which see them bigger. You can even zoom in or zoom out on them so you can net, so you can really determine if that's one that you want to bring in or not is what I'm trying to say. The ones that are grayed out will stay where, where they are, so they'll stay in the folder, they just won't be imported. So the left-hand side, this is basically three sections to this panel. Left-hand side is for um, navigating to where your images are. So if there was a memory card, you'd see that here. The camera, you'd see that here. Folders, you see that here. The middle is simply choosing which ones and how to add them. So add, copy, copy, boo, whatever. And then the right-hand side is for post-processing, meaning what do you want to do with those images after they've been imported? So you have a few options over there. So first option right off the bat, build previews and build smart previews. What I like to refer to this is, as is the preview tax. You're going to pay the preview tax one way or the other. It's just do you want to pay it now or do you want to pay it later? Because you're going to pay it. <laughs> so... I choose to pay it later. What I mean by that is I'm gonna build a minimum preview now so the import goes faster, but as soon as you click on an image and you look at it full size, it automatically builds a one-to-one -one preview. So that's paying the tax later. I could build all the one-to-one -one previews now, but let's say they're images I just never get to or I delete or whatever, and I never actually zoom in on them. Then I've wasted my time building those previews up front. Building smart previews is a good idea for people that want to have the ability to work offline or work away from those images. So if I was doing this on a laptop and my hard drive was um, staying home, my bigger hard drive, then I would have smart previews to be able to edit and work on the images in Lightroom. Now, you still won't really work on them in Photoshop with smart previews. You need the originals for that. But for all the, Photoshop, all the Lightroom stuff, I could do that with a smart preview. And then uh, there's a bunch of things that we can go through, but I'm going to go ahead and do one more here, and that is, or two more. We're going to we can add them to a collection at this point, so that's an organizational method. So I can say create a new collection called um, we'll put this in demo called D Daily Creative Challenge Photography um, 11 2019. So I know which one it is. All right, and also it can sync to Lightroom in the cloud. So it'll sync smart previews to the cloud so I can see them on my mobile devices. So I can do that all in one step. Last but not least, you can create a metadata template. And a metadata template simply determines what metadata you want to be in all your images. So for example, if I switch to me, that's telling it to put my name, my city, state, you know, website, so forth and so on. So that's in all my images right off the bat. Um, so that way I don't have to think about it. And my website needs updating. So let's do that. HTTPS, Terry White dot photography. Because now I'm using, um, I'm using Adobe Portfolio for my website. So now that's been edited, I can say update that preset. And now when I click done, the, all that metadata will automatically be put into the photo. So let's go ahead and do the import because we don't have a ton of time. And that will then begin the imports, which should be really quick because the images were already on hard drive. And now it should have created a DCC um, photography 11 2019 or collection as well. All right, so let's see here. Next up, let's go in and talk about doing the same exact thing in Lightroom. So that was Lightroom Classic. We're switching over to the other Lightroom, which is the cloud-based version. Or not. Or not. Oh, it's minimized. Sorry about that. 
There we go. And now I can do the same thing. So instead of an import button, I just hit the plus sign. Yep. And I can tell it where to get them from. It's going to grab them from the same place. Review for import, the same kind of thing. Uh, I get the ability to put them in an album as well. So I can create a new album. There's that album, by the way, is already there, the one that we just did. So I can, I can put them in the same one. And uh, I get to choose which ones to bring in or which ones not to bring in. So I can uncheck one of the duplicates. And at this point, that's it. There's no metadata template. There's, this is a much simpler interface for uh, doing the import. So now I can just go ahead and say, add photos. And it will do it and then take me to that album that uh, it told it to put them in. So that's it. That's how you would import into Lightroom either version of Lightroom. All right, now for the challenge itself, let's go ahead and pick one and do a quick edit or two. Uh, so I'm gonna go back to classic. Again, what I'm, what I'm gonna show you would work in either one, but I'm a classic user by default, so that's what I normally do. And I'm gonna pick one of the photos that I like for, um, for editing here. Let's pick this one because we're going to use a different one on another day, I think tomorrow. So let's use this one for today. So I like this image. The only thing I don't like about it, I kind of like the Bob Wire as kind of a reference. But what I don't like about it is just how far and how much, uh, you know, dead space or, or empty space there is around the right and upper corner of it. So first thing I'm going to do is go to crop. And actually, before I even go to crop, let's do a couple other things first. Let's go to develop. And second let's not do before and after all right let's go to develop and let's go in and choose trend or actually lens corrections so we can enable lens profile correction this one doesn't need one because it was shot with mirrorless uh, let's go to basic and let's do a oh these are JPEGs, so I don't get my raw raw profile sorry about that I was gonna choose vivid but that's a raw profile so we'll just leave it on color for now and let's auto tone it Okay, so that reduced the clipping in the highlights, great. And while I'm here, I'm gonna add a little more texture, add a little bit more clarity, add some vibrance, a little bit more vibrant. I think the sky can even be bluer. We can add a little saturation too, since this is not a person. And we can also just add a little dehaze, even though they're, oh, nope, I take that back. No need for dehaze on this shot. It's actually making it not better. It's making it worse. Because I was going to say, there's really not any haze in this shot anyway. All right, so now, next up, now we can go to crop. And then we're just going to go ahead and um, freeform crop this. So I just want to kind of put the point of interest. Now you notice you get the rule of thirds, this grid. I'm going to put my point of interest, which is one of the intersections, to that area of the photo. And so that's kind of recomposing that shot, giving it a better point of interest, keeping the bob wire in there for the fence, just kind of a point of reference and it gives us a foreground. And now that gives us our moon. Now, since uh, the question was asked about Photoshop, let's say I want to do something like make the moon bigger. So how would I do that? That's not a Lightroom thing, that's a Photoshop thing. So once you've made your Lightroom edits, we're going to choose edit in Photoshop, right click, edit in Photoshop. That will ask us if we want to edit a copy, which we do. That way we have an original. We don't have to worry about messing up the original. And it'll launch Photoshop. Um, and then it will bring it up. Okay, so now I can go in and I can say that, hey, I'd love to have that moon, that moon area be bigger. So what I'm gonna do is just make a selection around it any selection tool will do. And I'm going to feather that selection. So we'll go select modify feather. Just make, make it nice and soft. And then I'm going to duplicate that onto its own layer. So layer via duplicate layer via copy, new layer via copy. There we go, command J. And now the moon is on its own layer all by itself. So that little blob there. So now I can free transform it, command T. I can just scale it to be bigger and then move it back in place. Now we have a bit of a moon in a moon. That's okay. We can hide the other one. All right. And now that I made the initial moon, the, the, the new moon bigger, 
We go back to the layer with the old moon, so we can call this one, by the way, new moon. Go back to the background that has the old moon and just simply remove it because we don't need it anymore. Now, if you want to keep that as a safety net, duplicate the background as well, but we'll just remove it using the patch tool and that gives us our new moon. All right, so our new bigger moon, save it, close it, come back to Lightroom and it puts it right next to the original in the same collection. And then we can uh, go in and take a look at it. So that's the original. That's the new one, so just a bigger moon. All right, so now, at this point, we're gonna talk about exporting this to go out to Behance, or to go out to Discord, or both. So to do an export in Lightroom, uh, classic, you would go to the File menu and choose Export. When you choose Export, it's gonna bring up this dialog box. I've got a bunch of presets already, but I'm gonna bring up the dialog box and walk you through it by step, step by step. And we'll maybe make a preset so that way we can use it from here on out. So export to the hard drive. You want to make sure that's your choice that you chose. Uh, to a specific folder, you can put this folder or you know do this anywhere you want. So I'll just do it to the desktop. I'm going to make a subfolder on the desktop called DCC um, Photography. And then uh, I don't need to rename the file. I don't need to do any of that. I do want to make a JPEG of it. And I'm going to make it going to make it 100% on the longest edge. So I'm going to resize it to the. And by the way, sRGB. I'm going to make it on the longest edge, 1080 pixels, which is a great size for web and for Instagram and things like that. 72 pixels per inch. No sharpening required. Include only the copyright and contact info. I don't need anything else. And then show it to me in the operating system when you're done. So Finder or Windows Explorer. Now, so that I don't have to remember how to do this ever again, I can click add a preset in my user presets for DCC. So meaning for the daily creative challenge. So now I've made that preset. So anytime I ever want to do this again, I just click on for DCC and away I go. So I hit export. It makes that file and should show it to me. Yes. Oh, yeah, I'm sorry. Put it in. I have had that folder named already, so I put it in the same folder. But there it is. Nope. And where is it? It should be the new one. All right, let's try that again. Let's put it in a different folder just for the sake of confusion. All right, file, export. You won't run into this because hopefully you won't be doing this in the same folder. Um, export. Just make a new folder and call it export and we'll update our preset and then do the export. There we go. That's the one I'm looking for. Okay, so now that I've got that image to share on Discord and to share on, um, on Behance. So once you do your um, sharing to Behance with the, again, with the hashtag daily creative challenge, or I'm sorry, PS daily creative challenge, then we'll be able to find it. And you can also upload it directly to Discord. All right. Um, with that said, I think we are good to go for today. So keep this in mind. Um, you can work on any photo you want, but the idea was to learn how to do your imports, to learn how to put them in an album, to learn how to round trip to Photoshop and back. You don't have to do that for the challenge today, but that's an extra benefit that you can go from Lightroom to Photoshop to do something that Lightroom can't do. All right, and with that said, um, we are gonna say goodbye, folks. We'll see you tomorrow. I can't wait to see what you guys create, either with these photos or with your own. Feel free to take any creative liberties you want with these photos to do something outside of the box. I'd appreciate that. All right, guys, thanks for watching, and we will catch you on the next one. And by the way, you wanna stay tuned, because up next, is photo compositing with Aaron Nace. Uh, that's going to be awesome. And you'll see some more compositing techniques and things. So with that said, cheers everybody. Thanks for watching. We'll catch you on the next one. Bye everybody.